All right, today we are working on our backhoe. It's a Ford New Holland 555E, it's 98 specifically. We just got done last weekend rebuilding one stabilizer cylinder. Over here, freshly rebuilt. Looks good, clean shaft. Uh, today we are going to be rebuilding this one. As you can see, tons of leaking hydraulic oil, dirt, it's actually dripping right there for the shot. How convenient. Okay, first step, we're gonna clean it. As you can see, a ton of various hydraulic oil, dirt. We're gonna get it all cleaned up so when the shaft goes in, it's not cranking any extra mud in there. See, the cap of each cylinder has a gland nut and there'll be holes in the end. So your gland nut wrench has two pins that go inside of these holes and you'll use that to break it free. If it doesn't work, we tend to just stick a giant pipe wrench on it and let it bite into the steel edge of the cap and then unthread it that way. Next up, we're gonna remove this pin. Give you the close up shot, you can see here there's a slight edge. You'll use ring clip pliers and a screwdriver to pop that off. And then once this washer and ring clip come off, we'll just drive the pin straight through. Shot. Gotta pull this ring off next. Oh, is that the shot? A few inches later. Pro tip, we didn't do it. There's a Zerk fang right there. Pump some grease in there before you pound it out. Uh, would be a good idea. Okay, now that the pin is removed, we will next be disconnecting the hydraulic hoses. One of these is fluid in and one is fluid out. I don't know which one, uh, but you need to disconnect both. So you have to be careful when you're changing these, these metal pipes are 50 to 80 dollars each and they bend easily so you'll want to grab the valve body thing and the nut with two separate wrenches all right second nut same thing to keep it from twisting we'll throw a wrench on the body i think that one should be there but that'll be safe You going the right way? Yep. Going up a size. A lot of these are very tight. So in the past, we've had to use 24 inch pipe wrenches with cheater bars to get specifically that one right there on the boom cylinder on the backhoe. So don't be surprised if these are very tight and you need to use large tools. All right, so we drained the oil by pushing it in. You're gonna to wanna to get it as far in as possible so you can mitigate the chance of scratching the cylinder. But you still need enough room to fit the tool in. I wanna put the gland nut wrench in two holes that are opposite each other.
All right, not enough. I'm gonna add three feet. Nothing. All right, we tried opening it with the gland wrench and a three quarter inch drive ratchet and a three foot cheater bar. That wasn't enough, so we're gonna have to get the big stuff. All right, now that we have the big stuff, here we have a 48 inch pipe wrench and a 10 foot cheater bar. Here we put a block of wood under this to get it more level. We've done this in the past and the pipe wrench is great, but it has a little bit of twist. It's a cheap guy, it was $50. So what we are going to do is we're going to pull the tractor up and use the tractor to pinch the pipe face this way to keep the wrench from going that way. And then when the wrench bites down, we have a 10 foot cheater bar and that should be enough. So we tried to take off the gland nut, even with a four foot pipe wrench and a 10 foot cheater bar, it still did not want to come off in the slightest bit. So we're about to take the second pin off, we'll take the entire cylinder home, and probably to a hydraulic repair shop who can hopefully open it up for us. Three days later. Alright, right now on the bench we have our other stabilizer cylinder. We didn't film the first one we rebuilt because we thought we would kind of learn about it and then we would look good filming the second one. That failed completely. We're gonna cut to a whole bunch of footage of us being unable to open it. Step one, spanner wrench. Didn't do anything. Spanner wrench with cheater bar. Uh, we moved to a four foot pipe wrench, which left some good marks in the face. Didn't do anything. That's what opened the other one with a 10 foot cheater bar and a four foot pipe wrench. The marks in the face don't matter. You just file the backside smooth. Uh, so that didn't work. So next we did some research. We tried peening the shit out of it. And uh, that also didn't work. We might not have hit it hard enough, but we didn't want to do any damage. So we finally gave up and we took it to the hydraulic shop in town. 90 bucks later and they opened it for us. Uh, they used a even larger pipe wrench. That was their professional method. We also tried a chisel. Uh, you'll watch a ton of videos. Uh, that's how they opened our swing cylinders originally. Whoever owned it before us because the whole face was blown out. But another option you can try. Once you get it all apart, everything's been cleaned. You'll watch the rebuild video. We have a nice top down. Everything's going to be... Uh, pretty simple. We left in this Teflon ring. Our cheap eBay kits did not come with one that was the correct size. So if you're shopping on eBay, we are about just over 50-50 on kits being good versus bad. Both of our stabilizer cylinder kits for this 555 have the wrong wiper seal. If you notice, it's not in. We had to buy two OEM ones from a different site to be able to press that in but our swing cylinder kits off eBay were great. Everything was the correct size. This one also didn't have the right size Teflon spacer, so we just left the old one in, threw some grease on it. But we'll cut to video, cleaned everything up, put all the new seals in, that will be installed tomorrow. Uh, this, ton of Loctite on it, the shop broke it for us. If you're having issue breaking it free, put it in the foot of the stabilizer, bolt in the rod, 
to hold it and then we use like a two foot crescent wrench with a 10 foot cheater bar and we have no issue breaking them free if our big three quarter inch impact can't break it free. We also don't Loctite our shit when we put it back together. We just torque it as best as possible. So if it starts leaking, we can get it apart without having a nightmare. You can see here on the edge of the rod, there's a little nick out of it. The guys at the hydraulic repair shop told us to just buff those with a piece of scotch bright, and they'll be good to go. Not too big of a deal. Once we finish buffing out those little scratches, we grab a file and just wear down the little backs of the teeth that are left from using a pipe wrench to open up the gland nut. You want to make sure that that backside's nice and smooth so that it closes 100% flush. Next we pull off the two outer o-rings. There's a flat sided one and one that's round. Uh, here you can see that the race from the wiper seal is still lodged in there. Our actual seal is completely gone at this point. The technique that we've seemed to use is to jam a screwdriver in there, uh, start with a little one, work your way up to a larger one, and eventually it'll pop right out. There it goes, um, and now we just go ahead and clean up that area so that the new seal presses in no problem. Now it's time to start pulling the internal seals out. First up is this little rubber guy. The only important factor on it is that there's a notch on it that faces upwards or into the cylinder when you go to reassemble. The one on this was literally just in pieces when it came out. Now that all the seals are removed, it's time to clean everything really thoroughly. Our kit did not come with the correct size black slider ring on the inside, so we cleaned that up real well and greased it. So beware with eBay kits and make sure everything fits before you pull it out. Now that it's all clean, it's time to install that first seal. First we grease it up real well and then we just work it in by hand. Next up comes the internal seal. The black ring on this seal needs to face inwards. You can pick up one of these three prong seal tool kits on eBay. Um, we got like a three pack with three different sizes for like 30 bucks. On some seals it makes it real easy to pop them in there and on others it just doesn't work. On this particular one it was a major pain and I ended up working it in there by hand. It looks pretty quick in the video but it actually took about 45 minutes in real life. Once the seal was in there there was still just a little lip on one part of it so we covered a screwdriver in a piece of tape so that we didn't damage it and just mashed it in there a little bit uh, to, to finish getting it in all the way. Next up is this hard plastic ring. It sits in the front lip of that seal that we just put in there. Um, it was surprisingly difficult to get in there but nowhere near as bad as the seal itself. We finished tapping it in with a socket. Next up are the two outer o-rings. The first one uh, sits all the way forward. It is the flat sided one and it sits up on the vertical skinny edge. Behind that you put the round o-ring. Now we're on to the plunger. This has just the one little band seal and the easiest way is to just stab it and cut it off. To reassemble the band is super tight to get on there, so the best technique we've come up with is to use a bunch of picks and tiny screwdrivers and to kind of work it on with two people like it was a tire and you were using tire irons. Once you get it on there, you can pull them out and then slowly work the seal around to pop it on. When you put it on there, you'll see that it's pretty loose on there. Um, when you go to assemble it, it'll smash down and be just fine. Now we're at the farm where we have a press. Um, now we're going to press in this final wiper seal. 
We're going to apply a bunch of grease to it. The wiper seal on this gets pressed in with the U opening facing upwards. The L of the aluminum gets pressed flat in there. Just slap it in the press. Uh, we're using a steel plate here to keep it nice and level as it gets pressed in. After getting it flush, we go in for round two with a bearing driver um, that's just sized right to fit on the outer ring there. You can see that the seal is fully seated and the U is facing outwards. Now we grease up the shaft and we can start sliding it down. You can usually get them started by hand and sometimes worked all the way on by hand. This one was kind of a pain so we beat it on with a 2x4 and a mallet. Now that the gland knot's on, you go ahead and reinstall the wiper end. The bolt here calls for Loctite, um, but we never put Loctite on them so that we can take them apart again uh, when they will inevitably start leaking. To tighten it down, we use the large 3 quarter inch Harbor Freight Impact. Then we double check that it's tight with a 3 quarter inch ratchet. Time to reassemble. Back on the machine, we're installing the top pin again. Slides right through, throw the washer and the ring clip back on it. Oh, there we go. When you go to reassemble the piston, you want to really lube up the inside here so that it slides in easily. Usually you can start by hand and wiggle it in there. Um, a lot of times the best method we've found is to stick a ratchet strap around it and then just slowly tighten it in there once you're initially seated. Once you get it started, just continue sliding it in there up to the gland nut and then slowly start tightening the gland nut. Here we're using a half inch drive ratchet with a three quarter adapter. It's a lot shorter and easier to tighten the gland nut using that. Then we found out that Sticking the aluminum rod that we had in the end and just twisting also tightened the gland nut. So we used that for most of it um, and then final tightened it using a three quarter inch drive ratchet. We don't go crazy on these so that we can open them again later when they inevitably leak. Now we go ahead and reinstall the hoses. You want to make sure that the ends are super clean, free of any dirt and debris and have a little drop of oil on the two o-ring seals. Um, these need to be pretty tight when you put them back together, um, but you can just test them and make sure that they don't leak. If they do, just tighten them a bit more. You want to install both of them lightly tight um, before you tighten either one all the way. That way they can be aligned as nicely as possible. We should have pulled this out and connected the lower pin before we attach those hoses. That way we're not fighting all the pressure inside of them. We cracked those hydraulic hoses open again, pulled it down, and then installed the pin. We pulled it out a little too far and had to beat it back with a mallet, and then beat the pin through. Installed the washer, and then added the ring clip. We then retighten these, get them all snugged up again, and then we are good to fire it up for a test. You want to work it super slowly and just let the fluid work through the system all the way up, all the way back down, nice and slow. Um, do this a couple times. If you don't see any leaks, you should be good to go.